Welcome to the Focus Hoops 2021 WBBL Trophy Final Preview, now joined by Nottingham Wildcats head coach Kenrick Lybird. Kenrick, first of all, thank you for joining us and obviously into the final, relatively short notice, having beat Manchester last week in the semi-final. Um, just initially your thoughts on that semi-final against the Mystics. Yeah, I mean, obviously we had a really good second half. I mean, to turn around... 51 points, giving up 51 points on defence and to turn around the second half and only give up 24. Um, and that, that big 33-2 to two run, I believe it was, you know, after being down 10, you know, I was really pleased in the way we, you know, we've had, we've been in situations where we've been down 10 a couple of games and we haven't, it hasn't gone too well. So for us to kind of turn that game around and keep the mindset of where we needed to be in the late game situation, I thought was really positive for us. Um, and obviously, just talk a little bit about your emotions in the last couple of weeks. Obviously, you've, you've had quite a journey in its own right, obviously, from kind of not coaching the team, having to watch the struggles up in Newcastle to coming back at what was short notice for the semi-final, now moving on to your first final as the head coach of the Wildcats. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I think it's been a it's been that kind of a year, though, hasn't it? It's been that kind of like high-low roller coaster in terms of emotions all year. So I think you know, that was that was no different. I think, you know, obviously because me and Karen were talking all the time and 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 we were in constant communication and I was in communication with the other assistants, I think I think it was quite uh, an easier transition than it could have been. But definitely it was it, you know, I'm sure it posed its challenges for everybody in terms of players and coaches, you know, in, in themselves having to make that adjustment late on. But I think, you know, the, the goal has always been to be in a major showpiece final, to be in all three, really, you know, and we were what um, one shot away in the, in the, in the cup semi-final against seven Oaks, you know, it, and we didn't think we played well, you know, so to come into this one now, you know, where we've taken a couple of losses that we feel like we shouldn't have taken uh, and go and do the right thing away at Manchester you know, in that second half, I thought we'd look quite dominant in the second half. So we were really pleased with the way we played and closed out the game. And for us, it's just take it game by game. And, and, and the performance in the second half is a lot to, was a lot to feel good about from a coaching standpoint, I think. Yeah, and obviously you, you mentioned the semi-final against Seven Oaks last year. Obviously, you narrowly missed out on the trophy final last year against Durham as well. Um, so why, why is it about this team and this group, do you think, that's managed to make that step from being in and around the final to finally making one and hopefully going on to win it? You know, I think the, the interesting thing, I think when you look at last year, we, you know, we went into those games, you know, if, if, if people remember, we were really hot and then all of a sudden, you know, we had, we had a couple really, really bad injuries. Um, one of which was Chelsea at the time. She had just come off leading the league in scoring. So that was a situation where, we were starting to try and figure things out, playing out of position, playing a lot of young kids. In some of those semi-finals, you had young kids like Shania Rose or Letitia Willis playing big minutes in those games. I think, you know, this group right now, I was watching something the other day. Um, it was a, I, was, I was listening to a podcast um, from Joe Prutney and he was talking about, you know, sometimes being ready to win games as a group together. I think that this group has had to go through some stuff to be ready to win games together you know it wasn't we weren't a bad team at the beginning of the season when we were the first team to really push that Leicester team when they were in good shape you know we weren't a bad team when we went up to seven Oaks, even though I don't think we played well and we, and we led most of the game and lost by two you know so we we knew we're not a bad team it's just been about going through some of the growing pains to figure out some of the things when you have players coming back in, when you have players coming back out, you know, one of the things that we found is when we practice and have a, and have a period of practice, we do well. And also, you know, we've, we haven't had to have many changes in our roster lately. So that's been a real positive as well. Um, and obviously you talk about some of the, some of the core players as well, obviously every, sort of a, a lot of the attention goes towards you two Americans and Jasmine Jordan and Chelsea Shumpert, but just talk a little bit about a couple of players that maybe for those that haven't seen the Wildcats as much this year, um, that kind of maybe a little bit under the radar that are kind of growing and people need to pay a little bit more attention to perhaps going into Sunday's final. Yeah. I mean, I think, 
like last weekend, you know, you got to, you got a chance to see what Simone Costa kind of the Simone Costa that we kind of knew dominate games at the end of last year, you know, and I think that you know she's had a couple of knocks and a couple of injuries that have set her back a little bit. She looked really comfortable. She didn't do anything extra out of the out of the ordinary, but she ended up with nineteen points, you know, and she's been sharing the ball well. She's been getting in the passing lanes. I think that you know, people don't really realise how good she is and how good she could be. Um, you know, she's played at ridiculous levels as well, you know, coming from the SEC and, and you know, and, and did well at JUCO as well. And also, you know, the youth age group at the Portugal. Uh, at Portugal. Um, I think as well, I think uh, Moa is definitely one that I think, it, I think can cause the opponent problems. I think her ability to play off other players and play in the space and gaps, I think is... Is sometimes you know she's one of those people that feel stats that people don't really really get to get to think about and see, um, you know, and then all of a sudden she's hurt you on hurt you in the game. I think you know, although Tia didn't fill up a lot of stat lines, she came in and she was really solid defensively in the last game. I think Tia Freeman's done that kind of, you know, got, you know she's been one of the constants. Um, you know, this year and last year in terms of just continuing to grow. Her averages are better than they have been in the last few years, you know, so she's continuing to grow in, in that sense, you know. And then and then obviously we've got, you know, we've got some other supporting pieces, you know, in obviously some maturity with Chloe Gaynor coming back from injury. We've had, we've had you know, lately people have seen Mariam come in and do really well. You know, Shania, who's come back from injury, just trying to figure out her way. You know, uh, Rebecca, Duomo, who didn't play in the Manchester game, she rolled her ankle at the, in the in the pre-game, um, and we chose we chose not to you know not to not to use her. But she's one that's just signed a Division One scholarship, and you know has played really well at the age group levels, you know. And again, some of these younger players, I mean, you know, they just need a little bit of consistency. You know, we're not really talking about Praise Karevba and the splash that she's made in periods in past as well. So that you know, we have some different players that can cause you cause your problems. And that's been the whole goal, you know, when we're fit and we're, when everybody's healthy, we feel like, you know, definitely in the top two or three collections of best, best um, group of athletes, the most talented group in the league. Uh, and I've said that from the beginning. I said that from the summer when we put it together and we got better with the acquisitions we made. Uh, and I feel that to this day. Yeah, um, certainly agree. So, so obviously I'm lucky enough to be at most of your home games. So I've seen some of that development from the junior side as well. Um, just onto the matchup a little bit more. Obviously, it's the second time you're going to face the Barking Abbey. So you've already played Barking Abbey London Lions twice. It'll be the third time you play them. Um, obviously, two defeats. What what are kind of your early takeaways from those two losses that you want to you're addressing with the team this week, building into into the final? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know. The first game we came in, we were at home and almost, you know, it was Cassie lit us up. You know, she was shooting it so well and, and you know, we didn't match up app appropriately with her. You know, it just didn't didn't go well. We didn't manage that well. Um, the second game, I think we, we did a good job playing through the first three quarters. Um, and then in the fourth, we had one of those moments again where we didn't, you know, where at that point that was really important, which was one of the differences, I think, in the Manchester game, you know, when you're down 10 with four on the clock, what does that look like? Four and third, what does that look like? And then we went on the big run, you know, and we relied on our defence to be very, very good. Um, you know, there were times when we did that in the first couple of games, but, you know, foul trouble and, uh, and, and the lack of depth really hurt us, you know. So, so I think that what, what we have to remember is that, you know, we're better when we're not fouling, obviously. <laughs> And, and, you know, and and our depth is is quite unparalleled. So we have to be willing to commit to playing well with the five or the unit that's on the floor at the time in order to hit people in waves. Um, you know, we turned the ball over a little bit too much in the second game. You know, we, we gave Ume, you know, who again was coming into our stride, a little bit too much room and, uh, and freedom in the paint. And part of that was obviously Jazz being in foul trouble. No praise as well, you know those things. Th those things hurt us in those games. But on the other hand, you know that was a game where you know where Kendi Lenders started her run of really dominating with the ball in her hands from an assist standpoint, having those double figure assists. Now we all know that she's capable of that, 
But we have to look at our part in being able to contain the basketball in the open floor and in the half court to be able to do that. Um, you know, and then, you know, one of the things that you saw in the first game is we imposed our will offensively. You know, in the second game, we didn't do that as much. So, the, you know, those things are going to be things that we have to look at this week and we have to clean up and we have to come up with a scheme and a game plan to be successful. But at the end of the day, you know, we feel like we're a very talented team and when we play together, you know, they're going to have to figure out a game plan to stop us because I don't think they've all, they've seen the best side of us in either of the two games for whatever reason. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned trying to enforce your will a little bit on the inside, perhaps. Um, the points in the paint nearly halved from that, from the first time you played them in January to last time out. Is that, when you look back at that, is that something you think they did a nice adjustment of? Was it perhaps you getting away from things? Just kind of where that balance is and how you kind of thinking about addressing that? I mean, I think that they, you know, in the second game, I think you saw they brought a quick double. I thought that was quite effective. Um, I think that, you know, we weren't as composed with the ball as we have been at other times. Um, so we turned it over a lot. I think we had 24 turnovers in that, in that second contest. Um, whereas that's way too many with the guard play that we have. Um, you know, I, I think that you, you, as well with points in the paint, a lot of their points, they didn't come up from tr traditional points of somebody posting you up. They came up because they dribble penetrate and we, we, we struggled to contain the drive and then they found somebody on the dump off or they got to the offensive glass. So for our perspective, those things are errors in our defensive system, you know, like we saw in the first half of Manchester. So, you know, it's different when Cassie Green comes in and lights you up, but when people can get to the lane and get to the rim at ease, that's just doesn't that doesn't happen. You know, we have the leading shot blocker in the league over the last two, three years. So it shouldn't be a situation where we just let people come to the rim and make layups. So again, some of the things we did hurt us in in that in that second game when we had everybody back. But from our perspective, you know, that was the first time we played with that squad. <laughs> we hadn't played with that squad all year. We had like three to four of our top eight coming back in that week, you know, from injury. So, you know, and those guys have needed the time to kind of play themselves in. And since then, they've gone on to play some games. They've had some highs and lows. And, uh, you know, and obviously we're on a high because we just played pretty well. And as we're still learning how to, to play together. Yeah, for sure. Um, Just talk about the turnovers a little bit more. Just the two games you've had 53 turnovers against the Lions this year. London scored 57 points off those. Obviously, I think everyone knew coming in, they'd be a good transition team with the backcourt they've got. And you mentioned struggling to contain the likes of Kennedy off the dribble. And certainly some of that's come in transition. But how crucial is that that, that number is significantly lower for you to have a chance to, to win this final? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a couple of different points. I mean, firstly, if you turn the ball over against anybody, you're giving them a better opportunity to play in an advantageous situation when they run on the break. That's the first issue. The second issue is as good as we are offensively rebounding the ball with somebody like Jazz Joyner, people see the numbers. If you don't put it on the rim in a situation where she feels like she can go get it, then you're in a different situation as well. You know, and it also makes you more foul prone because the game's so much more open. So 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 there's different things that, that those turnovers really kind of kind of will impact. You know, and I think uh, I think offensively, you know, we did some things, we tweaked some things and again, learning how to play with, with the lineups we're playing with, I think, you know, went a long way last weekend to saying, all right, even though we gave up 51, we scored 47, you know, you've got to be happy that we're scoring 47 points. But again, it comes down to, we took care of the basketball and we knew that Manchester could hit shots and, and that was one of the things that could happen. And again, we didn't panic in that moment. You know, they came out and, we, you know, we had set goals, short-term goals in the third quarter and they came out and hit us four point play straight away. And, and, you know, and again, that can be a cause for panic and we didn't panic. You know, we just stayed calm. We got what we wanted. We got the kinds of shots we wanted and we put people in situations that were better for them. That's what we've got to do. If we are putting our players in situations that are better for them, you know, we're really, really hard to guard and we're not turning it over in that, in that barking game. They controlled the tempo. They decided the kind of shots we, we took. We put ourselves in negative situations rather than putting our best players in positive situations. And But that was about still trying to figure out what we look like as a lineup because that was the first time that lineup had played together. Um, final one for me. Obviously, it's a little bit different. A big occasion, Sky afternoon, Sunday afternoon final, and sort of almost like a prime time slot, a little bit later tip for this one, three o'clock. Um, Sky obviously have got the ability to mic up a player. 
So from a coaching point of view, who who would you like on the team to be mic'd up um, to maybe learn perhaps a little bit more about the team? Because obviously, you know your team in practice, who talks and who's not, but you're never quite sure what's said in the game. So who who do you think would be interesting to for you from your point of view to have mic'd up um, on Sunday? I think I think right now, in terms of the way she's playing and the way she's leading on the floor, I think Jazz would be an interesting one to mic up. I mean, she's talking all the time and and she's talking to her teammates, she's talking to her coaches, she's communicating in the right ways. You know, she's making life difficult for everybody to make sure that we're, we're getting more comfortable and being uncomfortable. And I think that that is when, when we wonder why we got through that situation in Manchester is because she was holding people very, very accountable. So I think when any youngster sees they see her rebound and they see her score and they see her do different things and they see her block shots, they see her knock down shots, but they don't necessarily realise how much she's communicating and how passionate she is about it and how much she's telling people to do. So I think she would be an interesting one to mic up at this point. I mean, we have other people that you could mic up as well, obviously, but I think she would be a, definitely a fun one to listen to. There you go. Something slightly different. Well, Kenrick, thank you for your time and best of luck on Sunday at Worcester. Definitely appreciate you, man. Thanks for doing it. And yeah, we're just excited, excited to get back at it this weekend.